So we're rolling now. Um, what's up, everyone? This is Jordan, and I'm here today with the band Glass Beach. Thanks for Hi. coming. Hey. Hello. Every okay. single one of us. Yeah, every member of Glass Beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you all introduce yourselves and say what you do for the band? Yeah, hi, I'm William, uh, and uh, they, them, and I am the, the drummer for the band. And I do a little bit of backup vocals. Yeah, uh, I am Jonas, also called Boss Dog, also they, them, and I play bass and do some vocals and clapping for the band Glass Beach. I'm Lane, uh, he, him, and I play lead guitar for Glass Beach. Awesome. So and I guess we are currently missing uh, Jay McClendon, classic Jay, who is our uh, main songwriter and singer and keyboardist and guitarist for the band. Yes. So we're gonna try to we're gonna try to find Jay and get them on later for maybe a follow up. Yeah. But I guess to begin, good place to begin with all bands is how the band began. So. Um, you were both doing college radio, Jonas and Will, and mm -hmm. you, got, you were both playing Casio Dad tracks on your um, show, which was Jonas's pr previous project. And um, I just wanted to ask how college radio played a role in like your music communities, getting the creative juices flowing amongst a group. And I don't know, just college radio stuff yeah 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 um, yeah um it was it's actually so jonas found casio dad because somebody <laughs> else played it on mm -hmm. on, on our the same station on, yeah. on our mm -hmm. on our station we we uh, had what station was it yeah uh, uh KUMM. K -U -M -M. It, uh, uh i forget what the numbers are but it was the <laughs> university of minnesota morris's college radio station yeah hey hey lane yeah can you mute your microphone if you're not talking this is, okay yeah Cool. Thank you. Sorry. This I, yeah, is a yeah. lot of background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, no, um, yeah. So we, we had a radio station uh, at, the, at the university. We had a couple of radio shows ourselves. Um, we had a radio show called The Animal Show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which was an intro song of ours from a previous project. So, yeah, but uh, then uh, Jonas heard Cassio Dad music on the radio, uh, showed it to me. I was like, this is really cool. Um, <laughs> and I, my initial reaction, because it's just like, this used to be my initial reaction to anything that was like, even, even slightly like more lo-fi or like independent, mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, I don't know how I feel about the vocals. And I've super come around on that kind of yeah. thing. But, um, <laughs> it was like, it's funny. Cause like, that was like my initial thing. Mm -hmm. And now when people say that about glass beach, I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the vocals are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, and then like the we we started talking to Jay because them and William became friends through Facebook. Still haven't figured out exactly how, um, and it just sort of worked out that we needed roommates and wanted to start a band. Jay needed roommates and wanted to start a band, um, so we were just like talking kind of through that, and that is exactly what happened when we moved out here in 2016, like October 2016. Yeah, um, like is we we started the band with Jay. We lived with Jay for two and a half years while we worked on the album. Three years while we worked on the album. Three years. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Something. Um, <laughs> something like that. Uh, and and yeah, um, it was just like very. I don't know. It, it, we started like just kind of like jamming out the songs that Jay had started writing mm -hmm. for whatever the next project was going to be before it even like had a name. And it was very, it was very quickly, like William and I have been in probably a, a dozen bands together, if you count bands that lasted one night. Um, so we've like done a lot of music together and like it was very easy to um, kind of add Jay to that energy, I think. Mm -hmm. And then bringing Lane in after the album came out, it was like equally easy. Yeah. Because um, we've been trying to find a lead guitarist for like months, um, semi-actively. And it just like when we started playing with Lane, it felt very right. I don't know. It it was like did it yeah yeah no and i, I just i wasn't like, sure if that was a did it face or, no, a, or no. yeah face. well i was like uh that, that was more of a like and to bring it back to mm, your yeah. question uh mm -hmm. specifically about like the uh, how the you know the college radio station like oh, played, yeah. played a part and everything i mean like jonas and i had a a, a lot of uh, really like beneficial things about having the college radio station because mm -hmm. it was a pretty small university um and so our friends <laughs> our friends would play our music uh -huh. um on their on their radio shows uh and especially like since we were a, a punk rock like indie band they would have to play them like very very late at night because yeah. we because we would swear in every song and like or, they got away or, with it? yeah yeah they, they get away with it 
They got away with it. But the they don't do it anymore. But they don't do it anymore. And never actually did. And, and right. no, no one ever did that. <laughs> Redacted. That, yeah, but uh, there, there was, there's that. And then, I mean, like, I also had a radio show with my, another band that I had in college, and we would play our, we would play our songs live on the radio. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, because we were mostly an acoustic band anyway, mm-hmm. so like it was really, it was really fun and really easy, and like that kind of, I, I don't know, I, I really loved the freedom that we had with mm-hmm. the, the the college radio station. We probably got away with a lot more than we should have, but um, you know. Yeah. Also, if you if you haven't uh, connected it from we said earlier, the name of the station was K U M M, which you are allowed to read as a word. Uh, <laughs> that's so unfortunate there there was old merch that really took advantage of that i won't get into specifics but. i mean and it's just it's it wasn't even like on purpose no no no, no. Like, it was like a happy accident well because uh, like because well, of where they were trying like, to copy the nickelo the old nickelodeon logo or something <laughs> well they were i i just mean like they the the university the initials are umm so mm-hmm. when they were like making the radio station when they got their like antenna or whatever and uh, because of the where they're located they're k Mm-hmm. Um, so it just ended up being K-U-M-M uh, mm-hmm. because they used the initials um, but I mean like we're not going to play it too like they they had merchandise that mm-hmm. were called the, can, it was can shot I, glasses can I say it? it was shot glasses and it had the I, le- I, 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 on. I, yeah. I don't need to get it but I think I have one that's iconic <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um and they were I can I can I, I say I can I Hold say on. the the dirty word we're spelling? You know what? Why not? I'll edit it out and post if it becomes a problem. Oh, I don't have to, don't worry. But K it would they called them K U M M shots. Mm-hmm. So But um I guess continuing on hearing all this talk about like multiple bands, college radio and just like the impromptu one night band, it's screaming DIY basement scene to me did your college have one of those and if so like what was that scene like what were your shows like because I'm sure um are you guys familiar with the band's Lifetime Thursday the Bouncing Souls Bouncing Souls I've heard of yeah I am not big you see I love the Bouncing uh, Souls that's (laughs) that's the difference east to west coast um we're based out of Rutgers University which is like famous for putting a lot of bands into scenes like um i don't know if you're ska heads but streetlight manifesto yeah came yep. from our school um cool. the gaslight anthem came from our school yeah wow. yeah i'm familiar with both of those yeah. yeah so we have like a robust basement scene and stuff like that so i wanted to know what yours was like what your experience with basement sure. shows independent promoting and stuff yeah well we um i mean we're from, so we're from minnesota uh we, we, are, yeah, yeah. We, we we are and that's like where we went to school that's where we went to college we did we had a basement scene like relatively mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't huge it was um it would like come and go uh, mm-hmm. depending depending on who was at the university because like i said it's a really, really small environment i think mm-hmm. there were two thousand students total yeah when we were there and like the population of the town students included is five thousand. Okay. So uh, it wasn't a big area or whatever. Um, if if there were students who had bands, that like that would be the only reason that anybody was doing basement mm-hmm. shows or anything. Mm-hmm. But while there, we while yeah. we were there, there were a lot of basement mm-hmm. shows, and especially like a few people who were actively trying to create like an indie mm-hmm. scene in mm-hmm. in the area. Yeah, it was interesting because we like, and, and I do. I want to hear uh, Lane if you had a similar experiences in mm-hmm. in college at all. But like, I as far as how Morris went, like I think we started college, like sort of during a like party dip. Like I think our freshman year was the last big party year until like our senior year. Um, so like beforehand, I think like having band playing parties was more common. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it seemed like there was a shift towards like structuring things around house shows that were often mm-hmm. in basements, sometimes in just like a living room. The, 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 I think the hottest show that we have played temperature wise was in yeah. <laughs> a, a living room in the summer um, with huge windows, a tiny room packed with people, packed with like 20 people, but mm-hmm. um, that was all was, I could fit. <laughs> yeah, that was all that we could do. Um, but like, so that was all really cool. And it got to the point where I think our junior year was when the platform started, right? Yeah, something um, like that. A group of students and community members started a like DIY venue in town. Um, just like rented out a space that used to be an antique shop, I think, or a, yeah, a, it was a, like the basement of an antique shop. Um, That's and then turn it into a usually concerts, but we did like a, improv a shows play there. We did improv play, shows yeah. there. Um, we've done we did just like band practices there. So that mm-hmm. was a very cool thing that came out of I think a lot of intentionally building a music community while we were 
yeah there. and if if we could yeah, i'll do a little bit of an, a little bit of name dropping for yeah, you please, um, go for it just just like i i know at the platform we had remo drive once that's cool. And I know that's like mm-hmm. a, a thing. Because, Chase Huglin, I think, is sort of big. Yeah, Chase um, Huglin. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, like one of my, one of my favorite bands we ever played with, who did like a lot of shows with us, uh, is Weathered. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're like a they're a smaller like indie band, Midwest like, emo, Midwest emo band, and and they're really really open good. tunings, capos, Telecasters. Oh yeah, they're so yeah. good though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really great. Um, but it was fun to play with them with them a lot but the yeah Remo Drive was just kind of like around our scene at the time because it was before yeah it was before they um before, before greatest they, like, hits happened took off. yeah mm-hmm. I think yeah I and uh I, I don't know I don't know like anybody specifically who came from Morris mm-hmm. that was that has like become a th- I mean I think I think we're the M- probably like musician wise yeah yeah um yeah but what about you Wayne? um well I grew up in Texas. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> no, um, yeah, Texas is, is uh, pretty metal centric. If I'm if I'm being honest, uh, yeah, metal and western centric. Fucking country bands everywhere, obviously. But I grew up in a border town, so there were also like Norteño bands. Uh, there, there were cumbia bands. <laughs> there were, I mean our our school um i know that some high schools have like music like extracurricular music groups that go out and perform gigs mm-hmm. uh the main one we had was the mariachi group so but that's so awesome yeah it's it was awesome um but that's the thing is that like we would have shows down at this place called the casa de la cultura okay. uh, which was like a it was it was like a a local quote quote unquote community center where they would do things like haunted house every um halloween they would sometimes uh they would provide like drinks and food if there was like a concert in in the plaza near there um and then they would host uh for a while they hosted shows until things got a little too rowdy Mm -hmm. uh but um yeah there there was um uh there there were a few bands that played um both like like they would they would come from Mexico and then like play in Del Rio and then there are some bands that would come from around the area. There's a band from San Antonio called uh Piñata Protest. And if you've never heard them, they're fucking amazing. They're Norteño punk. Uh their entire band is is like you, you see them walk on stage, they look like a punk band. Like, okay, they start playing, then their their vocalist walks out and he's got like a blazer, he's got like a ten gallon hat on, and then he's got like like the the cockroach killer, like like curved boots Mm -hmm. and he comes out and he's got an accordion and he plays and and he uh switch switches between singing in english and spanish and it's really fucking tight they're a very good band and i enjoy them a lot but um but yeah that that was kind of like my thing growing up uh tried to start a few bands that kind of thing uh metal bands obviously uh went to college in west texas which is where it switches from being a lot of like latinx inspired like music to being a lot of country inspired music a lot of country western mm-hmm. if, it, if someone was like hey you want to try out for this rock band like oh, what kind of rock band ah you know like uh like got, got, got a little bit of texas country in there and it's like okay so you're a western band mm-hmm. that has electric guitar okay but um <laughs> and you have to gauge and, how how much you need a slide yeah and like above above where del rio was there was more i mean del rio had like a had like a hardcore punk scene but like the hardcore scene that was in like san antonio um and around like both the dallas and austin areas and whatnot was was something i mean we had south by so what in dallas Mm -hmm. um that went on and that was where i saw i don't know if you've heard gideon before that was where i first saw gideon Mm -hmm. i've never seen people get so violent at a sound check uh it was fucking wild. Um, but uh, yeah. And then the, the thing was, is that uh, I, I don't know if you've, uh, if you know many hardcore bands out there, but there's a band that actually came out of the area. I went to college in Lubbock, Texas. Um, it's a band called Judiciary. Oh, They're yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's my buddy, Jake Collinson. Um, that's awesome. I, whenever, whenever I went, whenever I moved to Lubbock, he was in a band called Hidden by Ivory. And I was in a band called hearts and overdrive 
alive. And uh, but yeah, now he's playing in Judiciary. Very cool band if you haven't checked them out. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the thing is that it was uh, there. There was some indie stuff going on, um, but it was it, it was largely like centered around like hardcore metal a lot of times Mm -hmm. all the all the dad bands were were metal or rock cover bands um a few gigs i i did sound for were like journey or 80s cover bands (laughs) um who made a living off of just doing that yeah and uh um yeah it was it was kind of one of those things where like indie bands largely remained pretty underground even in the local scene Mm-hmm. around where i was at um i don't know it was kind of just a thing of like oh and and like also you were you're talking about like the party thing here's the deal partying just doesn't die down in in lubbock because it's 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 a town that if you took if you took the college out of it it would it would like not be a blip on on the fucking radar at all mm-hmm. um and and it's a thing of like but but the fact is that it's like texas tech is like i think the second largest university in in the nation it's like, so it's just the college it's massive and, and lubbock's expanded since there but but mm-hmm. it's it's so huge and there's so many people that party there and it's a big like law school and whatnot so there's there's a, there's a lot of partying going on mm-hmm. um i went to a community college that was near there largely because of this the sound technology program and mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of partying but it was a smaller town and people didn't want to cause a bunch of ruckus because small town cops and you know all that stuff mm-hmm. but um yeah i, I don't know it, it was it's definitely been a been a been a, a weird thing because you know growing up like i said i was in a bunch of like metal and like hardcore and metalcore bands and mm-hmm. um and it's funny because some of my like buddies that I've gotten in contact with recently from like years back were like, "Oh yeah, you still playing music?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in the band now, uh, <laughs> like out here in LA." And they're like, and they're "Like, oh, is, uh, what's what's you know, like the last beach uh, may not be what you expect." And then they listen to it and they're like, <laughs> "Like, this is cool. I just it's not what I expected." And I was like, "Where's <laughs> the shredding?" <laughs> that that helped you too. Just just wait. Stay posted. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. That's the thing is that the whole reason I didn't dive into weirder music whenever I was uh, like doing stuff in Texas is because nobody wanted to start bands that were weirder. Mm-hmm. Every time I would come mm-hmm. up with a weird idea, they'd be like, "I don't, I, I don't know, man." No one's it's done just... it. Is everyone? Yeah, down there like Phil and Selmo. Now what? I'm sorry. Is, is everyone what? down there? Philip H and Selmo in Texas. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what you're saying to me. <laughs> the guy. Uh, Did the you guy just call from... me. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from Pantera. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah uh, yeah kind of also fuck that guy that guy does white power salutes on stage yeah it sucks oh. um are we allowed yeah. to swear during this interview um if you do we're gonna find if you do it's okay i will find out and i will brunt the heat okay <laughs> not on i'm any. sorry not to and i, I will, will try not, not feel to bad. cuss from that one <laughs> Every every time every time Lane drops an F bomb, I'm like, I had us uh, mute. I was sitting over here. I was like, oh no. <laughs> the way you should go about uh, them is if I'm airing them over the air, then I clean them. But if it's going right. over the internet, it's fine. It, it's as that is. Cool. Do you have more questions, or do you want us yes. to talk about the college days? For like Fifteen <laughs> I, more minutes. <laughs> I, believe me, I got robbed of my last two months of college because of this shutdown. Oh, so I would love to talk yeah. about college, but oh. we talk about Glass Beach. Glass Beach oh. Band. Glass Beach Band, Glass Beach, Beach, Beach Band. Band. You're cutting off your own head. I just want you to know that. <laughs> My lamp shirt. Uh, <laughs> I would not have noticed. Um, so, uh, moving on, influences of the band. Um, you all get lumped in. What I've seen is with the internet music boom that's coming. JPEG Mafia, 100 Gex, stuff like that. People who are just dangerously online. And I yeah. mean that in a good way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So um, I forget if I read this in one of your interviews, but I think one of you said that the whole boom in this has to do with the mirage of information that is just kind of getting thrown at us from Facebook, Instagram as our current main news sources, because most people aren't reading a newspaper. Most people aren't watching a a television broadcast. Most people are just getting thrown independent articles. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted you to maybe elaborate more on the barrage and I guess the meaning of said barrage that comes with being online in terms of music. 
Yeah. yeah, I I think I mean like that's definitely like something that's from Jay's mind, and mm-hmm. when when you do get the chance to talk to Jay, that's something mm-hmm. they can expand on a lot more. But um, but I'm I mean like my take and like my perspective on the way that Jay has explained that going into the music is I mean just today, for example, right before this interview started, I went on Twitter and it told me that Kim Jong Un died. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. Hey, but I don't know if it's oh true. Oh my god! Well, yeah, but I don't know. There's, if it's some, true. there's some. There's some <laughs> sites that are saying that he's in a vegetative state. So it's yeah, I, it's I, very I read conflicting that he was right sick now. From like CNN. See, like, yeah, exactly. It was, but exactly. So I see that, and then, I, and then I see, I, then I see some like, then I scroll a little bit further, and I, uh, and and I see somebody like a, a friend of mine who's doing a Kickstarter, and I'm like, oh, and then I see somebody who's doing a GoFundMe because they can't afford their medicine, and then mm-hmm. I see somebody some cute like, fan art, yeah, some cute fan art, some like really adorable fan art, and then like a friend, another friend of mine is like uh, starting an animation YouTube channel, and I'm like, oh, that's sweet, and then I scroll a little bit further, and it's just like, and then there's another article that's like, hey, remember Kim Jong Un? And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a, it's like a barrage of information for sure. I, nothing's filtered. Uh, uh, like uh, like how how our music is like generally kind of like genreless like mm-hmm. in a sense like the genrelessness of i think 100 gex is genreless they can get away Absolutely. with whatever they want mm-hmm. um and, and i think that's like sort of how a lot of online bands are maneuvering because like because you don't have to you don't have to fit a genre you don't have to fit a niche because you're not trying to hit like a, a billboard chart Mm-hmm. You're not like, okay, put me, like, we're country. We want to make the country billboard charts. Like, that's... It's that's, also, Jay's talked about, like, with the, yeah. the democratization of music, like, how uh, kind of making, uh, like, like labels are not obsolete, but they're not as necessary. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, where you would have, like, labels who are like, okay, we are a country label or, like, a country collective. Sure. Um, that's mm-hmm. not as important anymore. Like, it is nice to, to like, work with other bands who who sound like you, have similar ideals to you, and write from the same places about maybe the same things, Mm -hmm. but it is not necessary for, like, finding a platform for your music, because that can all be done independently. Yeah, and I mean, as as we are genreless, so is the internet, in the sense Mm -hmm. of, like, the way that it gives you information, because, like, I'm uh, with the 24 hour news cycle, uh, like on television. I'm, I mean, they used to like report on like important stories and then mm-hmm. they started reporting on anything because they needed mm-hmm. to fill time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think like the internet just like followed suit because yeah. now it is like literally 24 seven, mm-hmm. like, l- like news stations could like rerun stuff or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but now like with Twitter, where, where every, like every single person has basically become a self reporter, mm-hmm. um, whether, whether it's about something like, uh, that that is just about your life or um, that doesn't affect other people necessarily or if it is genuine like journalists who are reporting on um like catas- catastrophic things happening in the amazon or like mm-hmm. a- any- anything like that it, it is all filtered into the same spot so like you're on twitter <laughs> like you like there this the same things can be tre- like uh freaking like um, Sarah Michelle Geller can be can be trending because she uh, got, got a haircut. Well, at the same time, um, the coronavirus can be trending because mm-hmm. like they they got a new death toll. Like, and it's all like right there on your on your hashtags on the side of your feed. It's really yeah, it's wild. And I think um, I think like earlier this year, like Jay had taken. Uh, even a little bit of a leave from social media uh, just from from being like overwhelmed or like Mm -hmm. almost Mm -hmm. I I mean the thing that I've been noticing as well with myself is like almost gaining a a dependency on it Mm -hmm. like in the morning at night especially with all of the quarantining yeah Mm -hmm. um it feels it feels like the only way that I can like be still but then it just like yeah. blows like through my mind uh way way too it's much like having a parrot on your shoulder constantly yeah. chirping in your e- in your ear mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a twitter if you will ha <laughs> funnily enough that's my mom's life yeah <laughs> with literal birds yeah, yeah. Actual, literal actual birds. literal Friends birds a, uh, is she a bird trainer uh she, no oh she God. she works at a she works at a um a botanical garden that's also an exotic animal sanctuary that largely keeps birds and exotic awesome. birds yeah yep. oh, really um, cool cool i i i have like a little bit more time okay cool. so i'll try to expedite <laughs> everything so um we talked about this earlier before we went on bands like 100 gex hosting concerts and video games mm-hmm. if they're all right so this is a two-parter one what band would you want to see in what video game mm-hmm. and what ba- and what video game would you want to do a glass beach set in Cool, 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 cool. 
Um, oh wow! If I if I use Glass Beach for both, I can say two games I want to play in. I can break the game. You can. Um, I won't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, that's fun. Okay, so I I will say I thought about this earlier. Um, we, we we were talking about this before before mm-hmm. the um the call or before this official interview. Um, and I think so. If we're not uh, isolating the games I'd want to play in to like traditionally online like mm-hmm. multiplayer games, I want Glass Beach to. I'm sorry, William, you won't get this. Um, to do a concert within uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, um, because we can we can have a guitarist, a drummer, a uh, a horn player, yeah. and mm-hmm. a um, a an ocarina player, I guess. Um, so I, I think that would be fun. You know, we can, we can make it up online. We can figure it out. Hack oh, the we game. can figure that um, out. But that that is, I think, my um, my answer for that. Antarctic Vespucci, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, Turtles Take Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent Great. choice. <laughs> what about you, Lane? Um, I would like to. I would like to see. Um, I would like to see Death Grips, um, mm. and I would like to see them play inside of. Um, I would like to see them play inside uh, Chrono Trigger because I would just like to see how that would work. Cool. Well, I want right. to. See- I want to see dog leg. Sorry, this is the last, the last. I want to see dog leg, and I want to see dog leg in like uh, maybe a just cause game or something. Something really chaotic, you know, where they can just uh, just grappling up the helicopter. I'm thinking just cause four. Well, if Glass Beach could play uh, in Katamari. Oh, uh, Glass Beach Katamari. Glass Beach like, Katamari would be perfect. Like where we get like scooped up and we're like circling around <laughs> yeah. on the on the ball thing. I think that would be dope. Be and also, dope. I would love to see any like any like really like upbeat pop like group i Mm -hmm. i mean maybe maybe like pool kids seeing pool kids seeing pool kids play uh, in a horror game Mm. would be awesome like we were talking about silent hill before we got like moving that yeah i will say too uh i would love to have a glass beach concert inside of the playstation dreams uh, oh because because here's the thing here's the thing I think that if we legitimately just were like, hey, let's just make like a live show thing inside of Dreams, mm-hmm. I feel like we would come up with something that would be fucking wild in a visual spectrum. Yeah. Hey, let's do it. You heard it here yeah, first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be cool. But um, all right, I guess moving on from online and video games, I want to talk about the philosophy that you all have going into the band because doing all this reading, I see how meticulous you've all been with the songwriting, how meticulous you are with figuring out what was learned from the night's show, kind of running the band like a well-oiled machine, taking constant feedback and like tweaks to make it run as efficiently and as good as you want it to be. So I wanted to know what is, um, all right, I guess the way I can make this fun you're all tech developers and glass beach is your product what does glass beach do hmm. like our glass our, beach our band glass, glass beach, beach band, band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i should have known <laughs> um, we we enter the room we slam down yeah. a briefcase we open it up and it's just glass a smaller beach version band. of you three playing it's just us three <laughs> and, then, and then jay like comes out of an, a manila envelope <laughs> um uh yeah no as far as well the meticulousness what what do we do i i think i think uh that we 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 are able to like bridge that gap between independent and like working with a record label like Mm -hmm. really really well um while maintaining like uh exactly like the way that we we functioned beforehand Mm -hmm. uh i mean when we when we signed on for a run for cover they essentially told us that we just they wanted us to keep doing exactly what we were doing Mm -hmm. and to pretty much change nothing and they just wanted to help um help us do all the things that we wanted to do mm-hmm. so as, as far as like if if i was a tech developer and i would be like this is what glass beach is doing um i i would say glass beach is uh is a, a approaching music um completely open-mindedly and attacking it as aggressive as aggressively and meticulously as possible mm-hmm. in, in a way where even if you don't connect to it you probably will be able to appreciate it yeah. um yeah, I I agree with William. I think that Glass Beach is what what we do is we we push the limits of what is what is DIY. 
and what are bands within our vein capable of uh capable of doing with our music because like we have our we have our patreon and we have like a lot of uh, a lot of things like that that we're we're just we're throwing out ideas and being like well can we just do this can we just do that because there's a lot of quote-unquote taboos or rules that people just go by with us uh, by assumption rather than like hey why can't we just do this mm -hmm. i think the like my my short version of like what glass beach does is as much as possible um but like in as tight a package as we can so like we we, we experiment as much as we possibly can we do as much as we possibly can um within like what william was saying like trying to do it well but um and, and that doesn't just mean as many things it means doing them as much as we can and like making the music sound like it is a lot um because that's i don't know that's what feels right. What was, but, didn't someone say our genre was a lot or, or yeah, something like that? <laughs> I've been <laughs> Cohen. Yeah, yeah, somebody, someone, someone who interviewed us or something, or or that did a review of us. They uh, called us the most much band or something. Yeah, uh, the yeah. most. We were the most. The most. Band. The most band. Yeah. Oh hi! You muted yourself, Jordan. Jordan, you you're muted. Hello, Jordan. Yeah, it's my brother in the corner now that you can all hear because. Oh, cool. Hello, brother of Jordan. We live together. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know this is off topic, but someone just beat the Dark Souls remastered world record uh, speed run by four seconds. Wow! So, by breaking four seconds. By Wait. four seconds. That's a that seems like a lot for speed yeah. running. Is yeah. Dark Souls more variable? Uh, well, Dark Dark Souls Dark Souls remastered gets rid of a lot of bugs that you could use in sure. original Dark Souls, mm -hmm. and so Dark Souls remastered is harder to speed run in ways. But yeah, like you can't do you can't well, duplicate souls and stuff like that. But yeah, okay, cool. So I guess uh, last thing, so I could let you guys go. I wanted to know what the future ideas and plans are for the band. Any possible like I know a lot of bands have been doing like remix records. Maybe if that was a thing you were thinking about doing, mm -hmm. maybe some when if this wasn't happening or when this is all over, who you want to be out on the road with, states you want to hit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as for the future, I mean, like we want to, we're, we're working on the next record right now, but like I, we're always working on the next record. Mm -hmm. I feel we were working on it like we were the, before the, second. the yeah. If, actually, yeah, there, there were songs on it we were working on before this album came out. So. Yeah. But um, I, the process takes so long in the way, like how meticulous like we are, and especially mm -hmm. Jay. Uh, I do, I say that. Uh, do not expect it soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do not, yeah, yeah. like we're not. We it will. We will. At least three years yeah, we will likely be one of those bands where like we release a record like ho hopefully mm -hmm. once every three years, like yeah. something like that. A that would be nice. Band. Um, but as far as remixing things con was concerned, um, <laughs> that was it's funny. That was something we had like kind of discussed because our one year anniversary is coming up for the the release of the record. Um, but it's it's kind of uh, we've hit a lot of like. We had a lot of ideas for a lot of things uh, that had to be put on hold um, mm -hmm. or like set to the side because of a lot of uh, what happened um, mm -hmm. with the with the coronavirus and like the quarantining and everything. Because I mean, I mean, we haven't we haven't seen each other like Lane and Jay, mm -hmm. uh, Jonas and myself. We haven't seen each other in person in like literally. Like I think month, it was almost. my birthday, which was a month and fourteen days ago. Yep. So. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a long a time since we've seen each other in person. It's kind of hard to like be developing ideas and like working mm -hmm. on music. I mean, Jay can still be doing demos and that kind of thing and like send them our mm -hmm. way and we go, cool. And we found <laughs> we can like record at least our parts for demos from home. But yeah, it's it has stalled stuff, but it has also, I think, pushed stuff that we wanted to do to the forefront because like we wanted to start doing uh, live streaming and doing live shows. And now that's much more necessary. Um, so like we're able to really focus on doing that on like getting our Patreon off the ground and like use that as a way to like push us towards stability and give us time to do smaller things like releasing our tabs, um, doing consistent live stream shows, releasing demos from the album. Jay's going to sift through the literally hundreds of bounces they have and pick the best ones um, for everyone to have access to. Um, and we're also, we have three music videos we're working on right now. Yeah, we were, we are in post-production on three music videos mm -hmm. at the moment well we are in production, production on one yeah. and like post-production on two others yep. yeah so do you do all the recording and editing yourselves yeah yeah awesome and that was one thing when we started working run for cover they were like uh we can you know recommend you to like people yeah, they work say, with the videos they, and william was like i want to make them I they say, do yeah it. they were like who do you want to work who do you want to work with and i'm like and i say this all the time I, I super want to collaborate with people in the future mm -hmm. but like so this is my first chance getting to actually like direct and like make music videos mm -hmm. and i've wanted mm -hmm. to do it 
my whole freaking life. So I was like, they were like, who do you want to work with? And I was like, me, can I do it? <laughs> can I please? <laughs> Jay was the same way. Jay also yeah. wanted to do the music videos. Just a little non-binary so direct director known Jay. as William White, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you directed Classic Jay? Uh, uh, Jay and I directed that together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How yeah, I was um, I was more of like a technical director and Jay was more of like a creative director. Mm -hmm. um, so on when we were like on set, um, I, yeah, I was like part AD, like making sure we got everything like moving smoothly and like going because I, ha I, I had more experience like really drilling through. We shot that whole thing in one day. So like, mm -hmm. like um, we didn't, hours, yeah, think. we didn't have, we didn't have a whole lot of time and I just kept going like, like okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's mm -hmm. go. Like, um, and like handling that many extras and everything, it was a, a, a lot of moving parts and it was, it was cool. It was really cool. I, we, I, we directed that one together. Um, and Jay is like directing and producing a, um, one of the music videos independently like right now. Uh, and I directed and am producing another one that, uh, that gosh, I hope it'll be done soon. And then the fi the third one is Bedroom Community. Which, which is okay. announced. So that yeah. William will be editing that. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, starting soon. Yeah, starting mm -hmm. soon. I'll, I'll be the editing. deadline was yeah. yesterday. That was crowdsourced, right? You yes. encourage people to send in their own clips. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like bedroom community, we're all stuck inside right now. Oh, it's mm -hmm. like like self quarantining. It's so all poignant, I guess. Yeah, we had we had two music video shoots that we had to like either cancel or like postpone. Um, mm -hmm. That were that were that we had one. Literally, like, yeah. The day before LA called quarantine. The day before LA called quarantine, we had we had one scheduled, and like we were already on the fence about it. We were like, yeah. do should we get people together?" Like, oh, yeah. ah. and then like mm -hmm. they were, and then they were like, "Nobody can go out," and we we're like, yeah. "Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah." Decision made. Yep. Um, yeah. I guess like a quick little aside question for myself: um, Was there a wardrobe for Classic J, or did for people just walk on them what they were wearing? Because there's a specific T-shirt I want to make ah. a comment on in that video. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of comments on the on the video on YouTube of a specific T-shirt. I can't remember which one it is, but um, is uh, but there was yeah. not a wardrobe. No. I okay. just told I told people no logos, no brands. You can wear band shirts if you want, mm -hmm. but I was like, but no problematic bands. Uh -huh. If yeah. you sh like, if you show up with a with a shirt of, of a band that I know has mm -hmm. like an abuser on it, you won't be in the video. Uh -huh. <laughs> Like that was that was generally the the position we took because I mean mm -hmm. like if a band got a hold of us and was like actually hey I hate you and I don't want my I don't want our T-shirt in your video we would we would have just gone through and blurred it out or something mm -hmm. but um yeah yeah we didn't have wardrobe necessarily okay. would you like to would you like to comment on the T-shirt um I just want to say thank you for putting a William Bonney T-shirt in That's your video the, that was the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Everyone That's loves the that one shirt. everybody talks about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, who was wearing that? Actually, I think I think it's someone we may know. Because I think it was also right after they did the re-release of that record, and they did the second run of merch. Mm -hmm. So it was like they just had that, and then your video came out, and it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like they're both emo bands or something. I know, right? Yeah, it's like we would have, we would have fans that uh, appreciate both of us. <laughs> but, um, all right, last one. A lot of people have been, you emphasize the importance of the disregard of genres, but people have yet still tried to attach them to your band. And I think the one that I threw around when I was first like throwing all my friends your album was, chiptune cabaret oh okay <laughs> i like that <laughs> I, I like the i like cabaret as like a um, cabaret is really a, as a way to kind yeah. of like say because like we're, we're big like, i mean like like, mm -hmm. the, like sound wise like, you have a very big. glamorous sound it's yeah. like a stage i know um jay said that they were interested in possibly putting together a stage production yeah for a live show and yeah. um i guess what is the closest anyone has come to describing your music in a way that you felt did it accurately yeah. not even necessarily a genre but like uh -huh. a grouping of words that you think described the sound that you've all put together I, I, mu I, musical theater pop emo is one that i like yeah um, that i've that i've heard a few times like except like i mean jay isn't even like a musical theater kid no um, that's what william and i yeah I we're we're, we're, yeah. we're musical theater kids but uh I, I mean, I do want to just like comment on like the genre, like define, like people attempting to define us by genres and we're like, we're genreless. It's like, we don't, it's not, we don't care. We don't, um, even, we don't even hold genreless as like a tag. That's, yeah. That's if, just like, if people need 
like to have a way to describe us to friends so that friends will listen to us mm -hmm. uh, if they need to be like oh no they're like they're like uh they're like theatrical emo mm -hmm. uh, if they like mm -hmm. say that kind of thing and someone's like oh okay i could get behind that it's like oh you know it's mm -hmm. like uh, my chemical romance but like uh more lo-fi it's mm -hmm. like okay cool that's like if people yeah. the easiest way someone can get to describe us to someone else to get them to listen to us, I think is the correct genre. <laughs> who you're talking to and what is going to get their attention. Because I think there are mm -hmm. uh, quite a few routes you can take. And that's kind of what William was, was getting at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What's the, yeah. like, I mean, we, we've been called post emo. Yeah. I, I, I think the shortest accurate one is, is post emo because I think if there is a genre that we are like a reflection of above all others, I think emo is probably it. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I consider the shortest I, one. Yeah. Oh, go yeah. Is it the shortest one online. Gay. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as funny as it is to just like say gay, which is also <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I mean, I think you you look at like you you look at what queer bands kind of commonly do, though it is not going to be all encompassing. I think we mm -hmm. fall into that. Um, and I, I like that as sort of an, an identifying mm -hmm. uh, tag yeah. for us. But. We, we, we excitedly accept a, a, a queer tag as a genre. Mm -hmm. Queer like, synth punk. Queer synth punk, queer anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, one, f I swear, last thing. Cool. Uh, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> Jordan? Yeah, um, <laughs> in reading, I was finding about how um, on the first tour that you all did with Dogleg, about the outpour of the queer community that was coming to all your shows, talking to you all as like um, influences, with, um, figureheads of like being able to feel more comfortable in their own skin. And I wanna know what it was like kind of being put in a position like that where you're doing more than just putting out a record that people love, but also inspiring others to live their lives the way that they want. It makes me wanna cry in a good way all the time. Like, like genuinely, I mean, we like, it, it happened a lot at shows. We get DMs still now and then from like, especially like trans and non-binary people, younger people who are like, hey, you are, you either like helped me realize like parts of my identity or helped me become comfortable with parts of my identity um, or like I parts of someone that I know's identity. And like that shit, I think is kind of what that, that, that stuff is like why I've always gravitated towards kind of communal music and music mm -hmm. that like intentionally reaches people because that's what I've loved in music that I've loved is being able to find something that makes me feel better about myself in it. Um, so it is I I incredibly like moving and like uh, re rewarding, I guess, in a way to, to feel like I am providing that to other people. Um, it, it definitely makes it feel worth it. Yeah. And it can get heavy to hear that sort of stuff from a lot of people. Not mm -hmm. also not in a bad way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and if we ever needed to, we could just like, not look at the messages for a while like take mm -hmm. a take a break from it but i, mm -hmm. I personally like we, i mean we will get messages where people will say very 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 heavy personal stuff that i mean and we'll get emails and these long long things and like we read them and we try to reply to them and and i, I really appreciate it because like I, I will read them and i'll think wow like we're essentially strangers but uh i mean like i understand like feeling so connected to mm -hmm. people through like this this medium of, uh, of music and um and feeling like so connected to people through it um and and I, while i'm reading i'm like oh well also i sent people these kinds of messages too <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I i read it and i'm like yeah i remember doing stuff like yeah. this like uh, a thing uh, also the way that we respond to it i think is super important mm -hmm. um and it does like mean so much because i remember um i went to see bo burnham uh live once um i love bo burnham mm -hmm. um bo burnham is like it like one of the main reasons that i am a musician so i ended up getting to meet him afterwards because he happened to, i i was like leaving to go to my car and i ran into him while he was going walking into his tour bus and i just like said hi <clears throat> and he uh and he was like hey and then and i said i i was like not like very very casually i was just like oh by the way just so you know like i i am a i'm a musician um be because of you like you are a big like influence on the like and one of the main reasons why I believe like I write music today and he like laughed and he said I hope you're better than I am <laughs> and um and like I get I get the want and to to do that sort of like irony like kind mm -hmm. of like uh, self like self-deprecation but like in, in the moment in the moment I like literally stopped and I was just like I was like no your music is good 
And I like, and I was like, and I am also a good musician, but in a different way because mm-hmm. of being influenced by you. And he was like, okay, all right, right. And because it was like, it was almost like insulting to me. Well, he was, he was like, talking shit about your yeah. musician. Yeah, I know. And I was just like, so, so for me, it's important um, when we do get these like wonderful, like amazing messages from people, especially like when they're uh, them discovering and like like finding out about their personal identities, to like to take that seriously to have like that empathy, like the approach that we take, like when we, when we do anything, whether it's writing music or the way we interact with other people and, and then to respond to it in a way that acknowledges how important we are to them while also acknowledging that, I mean, like we are strangers and that hopefully they can find more like uh, direct uh, support and, and things in their lives. And, and if they can't, well, our music will be there for, mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but what but like taking that incredibly incredibly seriously because it rules and it's very important and uh and i do personally and i know the whole band like loves that we have been able to be that for people it's not necessarily something we went out of our way to do um but that just kind of shows like any sort of representation even like in lyrics like specifically like lyrical representation and Mm -hmm. in bands is is like completely and absolutely important so all right. Well, um, if anyone else had anything they wanted to say, that's all my questions. I know. I, th- I think you, thanks for this. Yeah. Yo, did you, you, you must have read so many other interviews and articles because you were like, you were saying stuff, and like, you would mention mm-hmm. something, and I was like, oh, you read Joey Tobin's like yep, yep. Uh, uh, article. Like, you read this, you read yeah. that. That was really nice. You I, I always try to do my research because I always want bands, I never want to bore a band with an interview. Always want the bands to have as much fun as I'm having interviewing them. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, this that, was super fun. You, this was genuinely. <laughs> a I would do pleasure. this again. I yeah. would absolutely. In fact, if you do um, hook up with Jay later to interview them, and you want more people there, I'd be happy to at least sit in and chime in if I need to. Of course, but, we'd love to have you back, Jonah. Uh, Jonas. Jonas, yeah. my bad. Happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last thing I want to say is uh, I said this before we got recording, but I do like your worry shirt. I like. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm actually... I'm, yeah. I, I, I worry is the first, uh, the, the release show for worry was the first show that I saw when we moved out to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Like it was the first like show that I went to. And Jay is on that in the crowd vocals. Yeah. Really? Yep. That's awesome. I, uh, I got this shirt when I saw Jeff at this, this one radio station in Jersey city, W FMU, I think put on a show in like their tiny little all purpose room, probably fit about like 50 people. And it was the month worry came out Mm -hmm. so just a bunch of angry sweaty 20 somethings jumping Uh up and throwing themselves into each other and it was one of the best shows i've ever seen (laughs) but anyways thank you so much for doing this i had a blast doing it i hope you guys had fun as well absolutely um this is dj tall guy from 90.3 the core signing out thanks for watching then i'm gonna find the stop